Well, tell me what happened here tonight. It sounds like the show was interrupted and then it was back on. I, I mean, give me kind of the, the layout of what happened here tonight. It's been chaos. Um, the pageant was originally scheduled months ago and it had to be postponed because of COVID. And it was supposed to be held at a different hotel and that hotel backed out. And uh, the director, Jackie McKenna, found this beautiful Ahern Hotel. And she, was, she, talked, she spoke to them in depth about it. And they said because they are a convention space, the mandate was they could have 50% of capacity and the capacity is 1,600. So our little pageant with 250 people wouldn't be a problem. Uh, yesterday during the interview, a, a worker showed up from licensing and asked to see the venue. I showed her around and they showed up tonight and they brought the police with them. And the sheriff's department said either you do not have the pageant, if the ladies still want to compete, they have to have nobody in the audience. So these, these wives and mothers who have worked so hard, their families couldn't even be in the audience to see all that hard work come to fruition. Right, right. Um, was there confusion about the rule? I mean, because I know there's a rule, for example, churches can only have up to 50 people, um, but a casino or a restaurant, for example, can have 50% capacity. Was there some confusion over where you would fit into this? Yeah, because this was considered a convention meeting area, they, this hotel was under the impression, and they had checked it with their lawyers and everybody, that they could have up to 50% of capacity, which would be 800 people, as they had the other night for the evangelical Trump rally. So our smaller program should have been not a problem whatsoever. Their lawyers have been researching it tirelessly. The hotel, I think, did everything they were supposed to do. Um, I honestly think this was a direct retaliation by the governor for what happened with the Trump rally the other day. And I think we were just, these ladies were the unfortunate victims of that. Wow. I mean, that would really be something. Tell me about what happened. Did, did the parents have to clear out and the, the spectators have to clear out then? And that's when you were able to get the show back going again? Yes, the, the staff here worked very hard to get the people out. Um, we were threatened with being arrested if the, if the guests did not leave. Uh, we were told they would be arrested and taken away in handcuffs, which is mind boggling. I mean, everybody's in tuxes and gowns and they're here to celebrate these women that work so hard. And, and to be threatened with that was impossible. I can't even imagine that this would happen in this country. I mean, and this is a major, this is a major event. The, the winner here goes on to compete in, in Miss in America, America, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Right. The, the winner goes on to compete in Mrs. America. And in fact, last year's winner is the current Mrs. America. She won the whole thing last year. So a lot of eyes were on this pageant to see who was going to be her replacement for the following year. I see. Tell me again. So the pageant is for Miss Nevada or Mrs. Nevada or both? There's actually two. Um, it started as Mrs. Nevada, who goes to Mrs. America. And then last year, they added another competition for unmarried women, Miss for America. So we're actually going to be crowning both of those tonight. I see. I see. Okay, but it's not Miss Nevada, because I think some of our literature says something about Miss Nevada. That's, that's not correct, right? It's Mrs. Nevada. Okay. And then Miss Nevada for America. Miss Nevada for America. And then the Mrs. America system is held here every fall at the Westgate Hotel. I see. So I this is, Nevada's a very key state for them. Does, does Miss Nevada for America compete then in Miss America or no? That's a different thing. It's a different pageant. Okay, okay. Um, Miss America has different owners. This is owned by uh, the Marmels who own the Mrs. America franchise. Understood. Um, what was the reaction from those who had to leave? I imagine it was disappointment. Disappointment is such an understatement. Um, they have walked side by side with these women on their journey. They've been without their moms as their moms are out doing community service every weekend. The husbands have been there tirelessly helping them and prepping them and, and paying the bills when the bills come in for these expensive gowns that they've purchased. Yeah. Um, we've had mothers and fathers travel from out of state to see their daughter compete. And they had to leave or else be arrested. Now, was there any social distancing or mask wearing at all uh, within the, the audience? Yes, everybody had a mask. Even me, I'm, I'm asthmatic, so I'm exempt. I still have mine on out of respect for the ladies and this hotel. Okay. Everybody had masks on. The tables were 12 to 15 feet apart. You were only allowed to sit at a table with people if they were in your family group. Um, it was very, very well organized and set up. There was no question that we're following every mandate. And the officers who showed up, how did they treat 
people? Were they were they forceful about it? I mean, were they adamant about it, or how how was it um, the message relayed that people would have to leave? Um, they were not disrespectful. They they were adamant that it was happening. They were not going to take no for an answer. Um, and when people were not not disrespectfully pushing back, but when people were resistant, that's when they threatened to arrest people. Wow. Which would have been quite a show because there were you know, 200 people here. So that would have been quite interesting to see 200 people taking out the handcuffs. So after a brief period, I don't know how long, but you were able to resume. Was there what, about an hour break or two hour break in between? About an hour delay. Yeah, yeah. So the women came out to basically an empty house, you know, after all their hard work. So we're trying, you know, we've got 10 of us trying to keep up the noise and the energy for these women so that they can perform their best on stage. And that's kind of hard to do. Were, were they affected at all, the, the contestants, uh, as far as you know? I, I think they were. I think it's hard performing to an empty house. You're expecting your family there. I mean, the families have made signs and have lights and had everything to really show their love for their contestant. And the contestant to come out to basically a silent, empty house and try to perform their best. And it's hard to get that energy out. Yeah, yeah. And then lastly, just give me your overall thought. Was this a shame? Was this unnecessary? Uh, what's kind of going through your head at this point? This was just such a great disservice to the women that worked so hard to get here. I cannot even tell you how many hours these women, they, they're fighting against human trafficking, they're fighting against bullying, they're feeding the homeless, they're working with, you know, prisoners that are out. On, I mean, they're doing so much amazing work. And to have people like them, to have anybody have this happen to anybody is bad. But we've got so many amazing women doing so much good and they get robbed of this one experience that they work so hard for. It's something that shouldn't happen. This is America, the land of the free. And, and we shouldn't be held to these restrictive things when we're following every rule doing everything we can. Yeah. And we're yeah. still punished for it. It makes no sense to me.